Uh, hey. Oh, man. Oh, God, this is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So... I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him! I haven't seen him since I was a kid. A lifetime ago. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. Oh, well, I, uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're going to help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. Well, anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Okay. Are you going to go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. Oh, God, make it stop. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. I'm so getting a new roommate. Well... Just my luck. Do you know why I pulled you over, ma'am? Mm, that ticket quota of yours wasn't gonna fill itself. Trying to be a smart ass, ma'am? Nobody likes a smart ass. Do you know how fast you were going? Yes. And? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> the smart ass playing dumb. Aren't you just a perfect blend of obnoxious? <laughs> I guess so. Look, I'm really sorry, officer. I'm in a huge hurry to this thing, and the road has been empty for miles. You know how it is. Well, what I do know is that the speed limit here is 65. I clocked you at 77. You're getting a ticket. Oh, to the movies? I prefer horror flicks. Regular comedian, huh? Don't quit your day job.
Well, here we are after a 40-minute drive and a harebrained speeding ticket. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing, while our loss, is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Oh, Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, Anna? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you, all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now, finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness, we have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from a path of sin. And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Anybody home? Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. 
always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon then? Mom is... I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry to hear that. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face, like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. He must have had something to do with the war. Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. What do the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. Then this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? <sighs> Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. 
Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Hi. Hello. Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, what can I do for you today? I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Well, gotta go. Good luck! Oh. Ah, maybe later. Thanks. Sure thing. See ya. Oh crap, it's you again. The smartass returns. You have some more crimes to confess? Oh, you know, maybe a felony or two. Wouldn't be surprised. Look, I'm busy here. What do you want? I just have a few questions. That's all. Fine. Go ahead. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods. That's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They are official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. But I'm family. Doesn't that count for something? You consider yourself family? I've never even seen you before in this town. It's complicated. Guess what's complicated? Not to mention illegal. Handing out evidence to anyone who asks for it. Aw, oh, come on, Sheriff. What's the big deal? It was a long time ago. It would make this girl very, very happy. Are you trying to use flirtation on an officer of the law? Well, that shit may work on numbnuts like Lenny, but I got work to do. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. Do you want to see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. 
<laughs> Just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Hey, I need to see the police report from 81 when my grandfather was found by the old sheriff. Hmm. We only keep reports filed after 1990 in here, so I'd have to go check the archives in the other room. If it was up to me, I'd be happy to go take a look, but you heard the sheriff before. I'm sorry, but I can't help you unless he approves it. Ugh, <sighs> fine. Well, gotta go. See ya. Looks like talking isn't gonna help me get that report. I'll have to take matters into my own hands. Hmm. Lenny mentioned that the older police reports are kept in the room behind those doors. Just your standard coffee maker. What should I do with it? Alright, let's see how this plays out. Lenny, quit loitering and make some goddamn coffee. Ten four, coming right up. Oh, it better be. must be the archived police reports that Lenny was talking about. Time to start digging. Yes, found it. August 16th, 1981. Let's have a look. to get my hands on that recorder. Lenny, for the last goddamn time, stop leaving the locker keys on this table. Always put them back in your desk when you're done. This phone is not here for your personal calls either. The county shouldn't have to pay for your giggly shenanigans, Sheriff. Hey. What? I can't hear you. Hey. What? I can't hear you. Time to waste more coffee, I guess. Lenny! Jeez Louise, already? I'll take care of it, boss. That was getting annoying. Hey. Hi there. So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. 
This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Five. Ten. Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. Okay, gotta go. See ya! Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. Locker number five is right there. This should open the evidence locker with the tape recorder. All right, got it. Note to self. Remember, the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting close to finding the source. I have a promising new theory. It should be ready for a test soon. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and then maybe we could eat the food together? I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. Oh, hello, dear. 